This segment is going to be about the Simple Deform modifier. And to be honest, I haven't used the Simple Deform modifier in any project yet. You don't have very much control over your object, but still it can give you some funny results and uh, yeah, you might want to use it and uh, so of course I'm going to cover it. I'm going to hit apply on the subsurf that I put on Suzanne just for the sake of having more overview or it's easier to see what I'm doing and apply uh, the simple deform modifier and you can see that automatically it's set to twist and a factor of 0.3 and if I increase this factor you can see how Suzanne gets twisted more and more 10 seems to be the maximum okay um, the funny thing is that you can use the limits in order to um, sort of from top to bottom limit the twist to the object so you can see that uh, on her head the twist is starting to fade out so maybe if you want to have somebody come out of a vortex or something the top half is spinning and sort of um, relaxing the spin while it's doing so okay and if you don't want this to be from top to the face but from top to bottom I think, I'm not sure, let's just try it out uh, in, let's make this invisible and in edit mode press R R90 minus and this should then yeah, now it's from going to top, from top to bottom so if you rotate your object in edit mode then you can uh, choose the direction of this limits twist and you can do the same thing from uh, below but that gives some very crazy results okay let's choose an origin point for our twist because now we can, you can see that uh, this is sort of the if I move this in Z direction this is sort of the evolution of the twist so we can make something spin around its own axis while being twisted which is kind of funny if you move this in Y direction you can see how the how the twist gets offset the twist axis so the twist will produce a wider helix and in X direction it does the same thing but the helix will be stretched in X direction there's a checkbox called relative and that just means that the empty will be uh, calculated relative to the position of your object if you uncheck that and you move your object nothing happens all it regards is the empty distance from the origin of your scene and also the rotation difference now um, the rotation in Z direction doesn't do much here but the rotation in Y direction does so if you're unsure how to deform your object just toy around with these options and I would pr uh, and if you're planning to animate your object and want to make the twist or to the deform to stay in place then don't check relative so let's check bend bend kind of makes a funny thing and for bend let's actually rotate it back because that actually looked a bit more funny there we go the bend will well bend your object and uh, sort of um, I don't know how to describe it well you can see what happens you get uh, parts of your object become extruded become wider parts of your objects become smaller and it's basically a method of um, try and error and you can again see I guess this would be for something like back to the future and when they exit a time vortex or something like that this could be a funny animation but let's go over the other two options taper with taper this your object will sort of be placed in a trapezoid so it's uh, blender will try to make a trapeze I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly out of your object so uh, there we can start to see the trapeze form okay this is basically what the taper will do and the stretch will just stretch and flatten and everything your image okay um, as I said I haven't used the 
simple deform modifier. This looks funny. The simple deform modifier very much. But it does have some funny features. If I scale this in Z direction, something weird happens again. So if you want to make a time travel movie or a movie where people get beamed through wormholes or something, I think this is the modifier that you need. Other than that, um, well, just have fun with it.